Hi there, and welcome to another week of Code Combat. Appreciate you tuning in and checking out another Code Zonk video here on the Tech Zonk channel. We were doing some Code Combat last week, and we're going to pick up where we left off. It's getting a little bit interesting. We're introducing if-else statements here in the Code Combat arena. Let's see what they've got in store for us today. We'll start where we left off by clicking right here where the yellow arrow is suggesting we start. Always good advice to accept the yellow arrow's direction. We've got basic syntax, arguments, if statements. We've got more arithmetic and variables in this level. Let's go ahead and begin by pressing play. So it does say that we have a shield that we can equip, but we're going to hang on to the one that we've got, and we'll press that play button to begin. Code combat. All right, so it looks like we've got to do a little bit of evaluation here before we begin. So we have to stay away from what appear to be fire traps. Uh, we want to make sure that we're picking up gems. I suspect that we want to be fighting off bad guys here. We don't want to go up into where all these ogres are. That's not going to help us any. And we want to avoid fire traps down here as well. So we're really just picking up the gems and potentially fighting a bad guy. It does say that we need to make sure that we are mindful of the double equal operator. So we are going to be doing some uh, checking of uh, figures to make sure that things are true or false. Now I don't know how or why we're going to be doing that. So let's go ahead and press the start level button and see what faces us. The nice thing about code combat is when there's something that it wants you to pay attention to before you begin, it does call it out. And that's what it's doing over here in the code menu or in the code window rather. It's giving us these yellow arrows that say, hey, check out what we've got over here. So let's see what we've got. Over here on line five, it says, if one plus one plus one equals equals three, make this false, it says. So it wants us to make that false so that we can move to the first, move to the first mines. Okay, so we don't want to move to the mines. See down here, it actually has us on a trajectory to do that. We don't wanna do that, that will kill us. So we wanna make this false. So if one plus one plus one equals equals four, which is false, then we move to the mines. So we'll never move to the mines in that case. Now, it says here on line eight to make this true. If two plus two equals equals five, then move to the position of 1540. What's 1540? Ah, that's the gem. So we definitely want that to be true. So we'll change this. And we can do it in, in a couple of ways. We can say if two plus two equals equals four, that would be true. But we can also say if two plus three equals five, which is correct. So the, now it tells us here on line 11, the exclamation and the equal together means is not equal to. I read that out loud when I'm looking at code by saying not equals. So on line 12, if two plus two does not equal four, then move to this position. That's the second gem. It says to make this true. So we'll make that true by simply changing the operator. Oh, you know what? We'll, we'll keep the not equals in place because I think that they want us to understand what that means. So what we'll do is we'll say if two plus three does not equal four, which is true, then move to the second gem. Let's move down a little bit and see what else they're suggesting. So they're, they're now they're making use of is less than. So we've got the now is less than operator. So if two plus two is less than three, which it is not. So it wants us to make this true. That way we will move to the nearest enemy and we will attack. So we'll make this true by saying if two plus zero is less than three. Now on line 20, it says if two is less than four, make this false. We'll make that false by saying if five is less than four. Or what we can do is we can say if two plus two is less than four, because two plus two is equal to four. So we'll make that false, and that moves us to 40, 55. Where is 40, 55? I don't know where that is. It's somewhere around. Well, it's somewhere that they want us to go. So it says, if true, make this false. Self, move x, y to 50, 10. We want to make that false. We can make that false just by simply indicating that it's false. Then we'll make this one true by simply saying true. That's all that it's having us do. And it's basically moving us to where we need to go conditionally based on true or false. And these are just arbitrary true or false statements. That's why down here we've got if false or if true. Let's go ahead and press run. Got the first gem. About to get the second gem. There's an enemy. He's coming after me, but we got him. 
We avoid the fire traps. We grab the last of the gems. That's it. We're done. So I'll click on that done button. And we did have a victory here. So we've got our experience points and our gems. But we've also got more experience and more gems because we did complete the, the level without dying. Let's go ahead and press continue. Now we'll move on to the next one. Next one here is, looks a little bit different. It suggests that there might be something uh, new or interesting here. Let's go ahead and click that button and see what we've got. We've got basic syntax, arguments, variables, and if statements. Let's go ahead and press play. Okay, nothing to equip here. We'll just go ahead and press the play button and see what faces us. Looks like we're going to do some fighting. We get a bonus if we have no code problems. Again, just like before, we need to make sure that we're looking at what's going on before we actually get into this. They've got a... Uh, recreation here of the game map and they're telling us to use move x y to patrol the forest use if statements to check if there's an enemy at each x okay we can do that so it wants us we're starting here looks like it wants us to go here it wants us to go here there's an enemy right here it wants us to go here of course there's a nearby enemy here so we're going to move to patrol the forest, I suspect that we're going to be moving to each of these X's. And then we're going to have to somehow leverage if statements to check to see if there is an enemy nearby. Let's start the level. Okay. So let's just take a look here. Here is, an, here is one of the X's. And you'll see that that position is X of 24 and Y of 42. Here's a bad guy. He's at X of 24 and Y of 33. And that suggests that when we go to this first place, this enemy is going to spot us. And if he spots us, because he's on the same X axis as the patrol point, he's probably going to attack us. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code here and see what, they, what they've got going on. So they move to the first X. They do a check to see where the nearest enemy is. If it finds an enemy, it attacks it. Now we move on. We move on to the next section. We do a move X, Y to 2760. Is that this one? Yes, it is. We do enemy two, find the nearest enemy. If there is the enemy, then we attack it twice. Okay, then it moves to the next. Is the next one this one? Yes, it is. Add another if statement and attack. Okay. So here's what we'll do. We'll say enemy three. Find nearest enemy. Oh, it started. I'm just gonna pause that so I can write my code in peace and I'll say if enemy, if enemy three, I will self attack enemy three. And I will do that two times, just like they're doing elsewhere. So that's done. Now it says, move to the next two checkpoints and take out the rest of the enemies. Alright, so the next two checkpoints, there is 3924 and 5529. Let's start with the first one. We'll do 39 and 24. So we'll self, move. To 39, 24. And I think I got that code wrong. I'll try that again. It's self move XY. And then I'll do a check for an enemy. Now, I don't think I'm going to see an enemy here. In fact, I don't think I am. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over having to check for the enemy. And I'm going to suspect that I won't have to worry about it until I get to this one. What I'll do is I'll do self move. X, Y, and we'll move to 55, 29. So after that, I'll say enemy four, find nearest enemy. And then I'll say if enemy four, then attack enemy four two times and hopefully that's correct let's go ahead and press run 
and see if I'm right. I'll first back it up, and then we'll give it a go. Here we go. Whoa. That was awfully fast. But that was that. So I was able to go ahead and beat all of the ogres. I was able to hit all the checkpoints. And I stayed alive and had no code problems, so I got the bonus. So when I hit submit... Oh, it's going to recreate it in full screen. So you get the full screen recreation action here. That makes it kind of exciting, like a feature length film. Really, why go to the movies when you've got code combat? Alright, and that's that. So I was victorious, I got my experience points, and I got my gems. Of course, I got the bonus, so I get bonus experience points and bonus gems as well. So let's go ahead and continue. We'll try one more before we close up the video for the day. Let's see, it wants us to go here. So let's see what we've got here in this one. We've got basic syntax, arguments, variables, and if statements. So nothing new, more of the same. Anything new to equip, nothing new. Let's go ahead and press play. Code combat. All right, we gotta survive and we gotta have clean code. So we now have access to the powerful if statements. We've known that for a bit. We'll check our toolbar in the lower right for the program, program, what is this now? This is for the programmaticon too, for extra information. So it sounds like they're telling us that if we need more info on how these things work, we can certainly get that while we're in the game. If statements are a fundamental tool for programmers. Create them by typing as follows. And it shows you a little example of how to use an if statement. Of course, we did a little bit of work there in the previous exercise, so this should be nothing new. Let's go ahead and start the level, see what it is that we need to do. So it says, remember that enemies may not yet exist. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a, we're going to loop, we're going to find the nearest enemy, and then obviously we'll attack the enemy. So what I'll do, is just because we did this in the previous exercises, is I will attack the enemy more than one time. And we've got it on a loop, and that suggests that more enemies may spawn, and if that's the case, then so long as we're in this loop, the more that enemies spawn, the more that we're able to continue to attack them. So I'm not 100% sure if there's anything else that I'm missing here, but we'll just go ahead and run it and see. Oh, my target was null. Right, okay. So we're, we're definitely getting ahead of ourselves. So let's go ahead and fix the code. Right, it says fix the code, and that's what we'll do. So here's what we'll do. And the funny thing is it actually gives me a little hint here in the code. It says if there is an enemy, attack it. And of course, we're doing if statements, so it was a little silly that I didn't catch on to this. But it's uh, one of those things that happens when you're coding here in real time and recording it for everybody is you'd make little mistakes like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the enemy exists, meaning it's not null, then we will attack the enemy. And that's when we'll go ahead and attack it two times. The enemy may not exist on the playing field, but when an enemy spawns in, then this enemy or this if enemy check will come back as true. Otherwise, it'll come back as false and then we'll just continue the loop. So I definitely see where they're going here. Should be better this time when I click run. Let's see. Looks like I only need to attack them once. That's good to know. But yeah, they keep spawning in. It's looping. It's seeing falses sometimes. But when it sees true, it goes after him. Takes him down. And it's just going to keep running until, you know, until the game obviously gets to a point where it says, okay, that's enough. It'll stop us when it's done. I think we're probably at that point. Indeed we are. So we did survive and we had clean code. So we were successful. Let's go ahead and press done. We do get our experience points and our gems and we've got the bonus. So we got bonus experience points and bonus gems as well. So that's going to cover it today for us here on Code Combat. There's more to come. Check with us next week. We've got more to show you in Code Combat in this second world as we continue to learn and explore with this terrific application. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see all of you in the next one.